long ago, in the land known as Caldrea, there was a war of epic proportions. This war threatened to tear apart the land as its people knew it. There were many kingdoms vying for the central throne of the old Caldreag Empire. One day a young man sailed to Caldrea with hopes and dreams to claim his own notch into the new world, hoping that someday even he could be king. This is his story of a destiny of the land we call today Asphoria. This young man was born to the world as Francisco Clastix II, to a wealthy noble of a faraway land. His territory lay at the center of the kingdom's desires and was soon laid to waste. In the year 1256, after the long and bloody war that laid on his father's land, Francisco Plastix was forced into exile and sent away on a ship which would be sent to Caldrea. In order to enter the land himself, Plastix would change his name to Franz Claven and was kicked off the ship at the port city of Chilcala in the territory of the Rhodopes. It is now 1257. Franz finds himself in a whole new world, ready to be claimed. Welcome, my fellow Russian brothers, and we are back. But this time with a new game. This is Mountain Blade Warband. Which is something I've actually really wanted to do for a long time now, and now I'm finally able to do it. Actually, I probably was able to do it all this time, but it's neither here nor there. Anyway, this has been one game that I played so much time on over the course of the year, and I really wanted to do this series. So we're going to play a whole brand new game based on the story that came before it. Now in Mountain Blade Warband, which is a part of the Mountain Blade series, you can actually become a king of a country, which is the first time they've implemented this. Anyway, you can choose a gender. Uh, males generally typically get a lot of uh, higher standing early on and females, nobles, will gain their standing somewhere. You can marry, um, just be different from every society before, on this game anyway. So I'm gonna pick male, well actually, before we continue, these, you know, the Steam achievements, because this game's on Steam, uh, if you're a female, you do get achievements for killing people. So, either way you play, you're going to get some kind of achievement. So based on the previous story... Gonna pick all the right things. So the advantage of picking the fact that you were a, a son of a lord, you get to choose your own flag or banner. There are numerous ones here to choose from, and of course some of them are actually already chosen by other lords in the, in the realm. The one that I commonly use is one that I've never seen any other lord use. gonna pick this. So this game gives you an option of rage quitting or you have to save before you quit. Now this game is a tribute based and points based so you're gonna enter the name in first. And I'm going to probably change this name up quite a bit over the course of the series. 
so you know. So as the base points for each, each different starting character's role has a different attribute set to start out with, a skill set and proficiency, which you are allowed to add on to. You can't particularly change it all. And by the way, each attribute needs to be leveled to a multiple of three before you can unlock a higher level of the skill. So in the power strike, I've already maxed it out at three. That means my strength has to be at 12 before I can make it to four. And so I don't die easy. Uh, I'm going to put some iron flesh in and a shield. Athletics will be good too because you can walk faster and avoid arrows. I like having the trainer one as well, which increases your per your group's amount of XP they gain, which gets them to level up quicker. Another thing you want to have is, if you want to be a lord and wander around, you're going to need the engineer skill quickly. Don't want to dilly on that. Just going to level that up one. Now, see, I want to do prisoner management or trade right now, but I'm not sure yet. And there's no, there is a way for me to increase one of these up there, so I get an extra skill point, possibly. Which is a cool thing about this game. It might give you an extra skill point for reaching the third, or the next available level of skill. So I'm going to raise my intelligence to nine to gain four skill points. Which gives me one, so I'm going to use that on prisoner management, and another on trade. So that allows you to pro probably, I haven't messed with the trade part yet, of this skill tree. How about, trade probably increases, or decreases the values at the market, so you can generally get a good price on foods and such. Another one that I actually like to have as well as tactics. And that's just so that you, you you have an advantage in battle. And this is one where when you get to companions and such, tactics, trainer, prisoner management, engineer, are the only ones you wanna high give up or give them a lot of a leadership as well so they have a large army on the battlefield and iron flesh or something else. You know, give them some kind of advantage in fighting bat combat, give them an advantage in strategy combat, and give them an advantage in personal effects. So you can have an effective leadership. So, I'm not sure about the agility yet. We'll, we'll get to that eventually. Um, I like upgrading my charisma a lot so I'm gonna probably do that quite a bit because charisma affects leadership and the more leadership skill you have greatly increases the amount of troops you can have in your army charisma also increases the morale of your troops so. I like to get inventory management, but I'm going to get some surgery skill. Surgery skill is probably one of the better ones to get early on for your character. Because in battle, you have a chance to have have, your, have, the, and have one of your troops get knocked unconscious or killed. Or, you, or they route because, well, you died. Actually, you don't die, you get knocked unconscious. All the lords get knocked unconscious. So... It's, it's good to have surgery because that lowers the point, or the amount of people in your tr the likelihood of a troop getting struck by a bow in the head and getting killed. You'll be able to heal them back up by wandering the map or resting anywhere and they'll be able to fight for you again 
Now we get to the proficiencies which deals with weapons. Now when you start out, you have an arch you have either an archer, like a bow, or a crossbow. So you kinda want to get your one-handed polearm and two-handed proficiencies up as well as get the archery and throwing up. It depends on your preference too if you decide you want to run around like a Swadian and a uh, Kurgit with your lances because pole arms would be your proficiency at that point. If you're like me and you love riding on horseback, killing people with a battle axe, well then you have two handed weapons. But I'm trying to, I've been branching out to the lancing as well. Although it's a pain in the butt when the other team lances. Alright, so that's enough of that part, which just ate up the clock quite a bit. Now you can change the appearances of your person. Now this one's probably going to be quick, because I usually know what I want to do. I just kind of randomly do it, you know. I don't change anything on the right, really, because that just takes up quite a bit of time to do. But anyway. You now, well, this part of the backstory is a gener general part of the backstory. And, of course, learned by the past of my character. This kind of doesn't apply, because I was, well as it even put out in the beginning is that I got kicked out of my kingdom which was more of a land so I've been exiled say, given to the Rodoks now the Rodoks you will see in a sec but, uh, you're gonna already in this game uh, as soon as you make a character and everything you jump right into the combat which is a cool thing about this game, so, as I said, crossbow, where is this guy, there he is, shift, it gives you a line of sight, it increase, it's a zoom in, that's when you hit shift, now, to operate the bow, you need to hit the left click button, and that's the merchant, alright, oh la di da di da, at least you kind of read this, you know. I'm not one of those kind of bad people. I'm not going to read right over it because you can read perfectly fine. Okay, so brigands are everywhere. I guess they've taken his brother. So he's going to ask a stranger who just kicked ass to go take care of this, so I'm, I'm interested, why not? There's a bit of, a bit of, uh, Diners, Diners is the currency. So, first off we're going to, you know, tutorials. So if you want to check out your quest, hit Q, like that. So we're supposed to collect five men. And to leave, tab. So this game's pretty good on its tutorials. So, Here's the map of the world, and controls are actually WASD, so not too hard to control. Left clicking and right clicking have their advantages. Right clicking is shielding and such, but anyway. So here's the lands, the Nords, the home of Sargoth, the Swadians, the capital of Praven. The Rodux, the home of Shalkala, Sarenid Sultanate at Dakuba, I think. Pretty sure it's Dakuba. And the Kurgits, I think they're from Tolga. And the Kurao, cap or no, Ravadin's their capital. Now, if you really want to know what the capital city is to start out with, um, just take a look around for the flags. 
flags are very instrumental. Uh, I think Nara is the capital of the... Not Tolga. No, it is Tolga. Alright. And usually the car the capital, the kings of each country have a animal, you know, on their flag. Swadians have a lion. And Sargoth is the bird of the Nords. But anyway, when you zoom out all the way, which is using the scroll on your mouse, you notice these larger named towns. Well, those are the cities, which are, will c become more important throughout the whole game. Um, they control all the nearby, some nearby towns. The villages also have their own things, like castles here have control of one city, of actually one town. Cities have control of multiple city, of multiple towns, and have its own form of currency. So anyway, enough of that. So we're gonna go recruiting. Now you can recruit if you click on Jokala. You can go to the tournament, which I probably will do, or you can visit the tavern. The tavern, which I'm going to, is at the beginning where you meet the merchant of Jokala. Wherever he is, you'll probably see. He'll he'll appear later, and where you can hire mercenaries. This is also where you can not just talk to travelers, but if there was someone like a traveler with a name, that would be someone of interest in a companion. All right, so before we do that. Alright, so the city, the village of Bouvran. I'm gonna recruit some volunteers, but no one wants to join me. Okay. It's a good thing there is more around here. So on the bottom left of the screen as well, you'll probably you'll see a lot of pop-ups, which will detail the events that are going on throughout the whole entire country, the whole entire land side. All right, so you got all five road of tribesmen. Now each each nation has its own distinct advantages, and the one we are in right now, their advantage is, is crossbowmen, and their armed um, men and women. So I'd like to take the time now to pause the action. Uh, it's, this has been Dead Nine Thousand One, the Voice of the Grishfaria channel, showing you. The land of Caldrea and the Mountain Blade Warband. And I will see you next time for more. We'll join the tournament and we'll enjoy the lovely scenery of chaos and destruction.